Next, we're going to talk about the kinetics of radioactive decay. It turns out that radioactive decay follows first order kinetics. So we have some equations like this one for the half-life related to the rate constant k. We have the integrated rate law form, which I have rewritten below it in a slightly different form. Now, when we were doing kinetics, we were always concerned with the concentration of a chemical. In radioactive changes, you might be concerned with the amount, the mass, not just the concentration, or you might be talking about how many disintegrations per second a certain amount of radioactive material has. So I've dropped the square brackets, but notice in the, this form of the equation, it's just the ratio. So it doesn't matter if you're talking about mass or concentration, the effect is the same in this formula because it's a ratio. So we can use that in a question like this one. Phosphorus-32 is a radioactive isotope that can be used to help find tumors. It has a half-life of just over 14 days. If a patient is given 10 milligrams, how much of that is going to remain after 30 days? So we're going to use the form of this equation. Remember, T stands for the later amount, and A was always the initial amount. From the half-life, we can calculate the rate constant K, because that would be 0.693 divided by the half-life, which gives you 0 0.04846 inverse days. So we can take that and make the substitution here. We want to calculate the amount left. After 30 days, the initial amount was 10 milligrams. We just found K. And the time is the total amount 30 days. Notice inverse days cancels with days. The right hand side is unitless. And we get the natural log of our unknown divided by 10 is equal to negative 1.4539. So now it's just a matter of getting rid of the natural log, which means we use E as the base. And so the amount at the later time divided by 10 is E to the negative 1.45 which is 0 0.23367, or the amount left when you multiply by 10 is 2.34 milligrams. The nice thing about first order kinetics was the half-life, remember, is constant. It doesn't depend on the amount. So if this isotope had a half-life of 14 days and we're looking at a time period of 30 days we can do a quick check on this because 14 days after 14 days 10 milligrams should end up being 5 milligrams if we wait another half-life 14 days 5 milligrams will drop down to two and a half milligrams this isn't exactly the same number in the problem, but it's 28 days. So 28 days, two and a half milligrams. We waited 30 days, so the amount of the isotope will be just a little bit less.